read in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 24 through 26. I think it is on page 875 in the Blue Bibles, in the New Testament. John 12, 24 through 26. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who want their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. In this text of the scriptures, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his death. He talks about the seed that needs to die in order to live and to give life. Later on, he will tell his disciples to remember him with the celebration of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a meal with a memory. Meals have this powerful way of reminding us of people we love. I remember eating roasted corn with my grandfather. Roasted corn is like corn on a palm, but instead of boiled, it is roasted on toast. And I think it is delicious. My grandfather loved it too. Every time we have a barbecue in the summer and I roast some corn, I remember my grandfather. I also remember planting corn with him, sowing the seed under the scorch sun of the summer so that we could harvest fresh corn in the fall. After the seeding, we would wait for the right amount of rain, not too much, not too little, and I would watch attentively for the sprouting of each new plant. We placed four kernels of corn in each hole. So when only three plants sprouted, I knew that one of them had not germinated. Jesus and his companions were pretty familiar with seeds. Wheat was a major agricultural product in Palestine. Both religious and secular literature make abundant reference to wheat as an economic product as well as a symbol of the goodness of their land. <coughs> Given the familiarity of Jesus' audience with agriculture, his allusion to the life cycle of a seed is an illustration for his ministry and they understood what he was talking about. So what is a seed? First of all, a seed is an entity that carries a genetic code and is able to reproduce an organism. In the natural world, a seed has this incredible capacity, capacity to draw energy from the environment in order to germinate and reproduce the organism it encodes. Think of a oak tree. The acorn is not an oak tree. It is only an acorn. Yet, when in contact with the ground, it will attract the water and the minerals and the nutrients it needs in order to germinate. Then the new plant will continue to draw energy from the environment, including light for photosynthesis in order to grow. Eventually, where there was no oak tree, now there is an oak tree. The water, the minerals, the sunlight, the energy that was in the environment 
has been processed through the germination of the acorn, and now the environment has produced an oak tree. At the same time, without the acorn, no oak tree would be there. In nature, then, a seed is an entity with the necessary structure to draw from the environment the energy it needs to reproduce an organism. Jesus talks about the seed in preparation for his death. The evangelist John describes Jesus preparing his disciples for the kind of death that he was to die. He is adamant. It is for this reason that I have come for this hour. Every month, as we celebrate the Eucharist, we proclaim again in word and sacrament that sacred memory at the center of the Christian faith that Christ gave his life to save the world. I never cease to marvel at the genius of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a meal that mixes together the physical elements of bread and wine with the spiritual elements of the sacred memory. Saint Ambrose said, before the words of the institution are read, what we have is bread and wine. But afterwards, it is a sacrament. But the Eucharist is not only a sacred memory. As sacred memory, it is also a seed of hope. Every time we receive the elements of communion, we should be reminded also that no one should be excluded from God's abundance of bread and wine, from the basics of life and life's joys. The Eucharist is also a seed for justice as bread is broken for all. A leading Orthodox theologian made a challenging statement in his address to the World Council of Churches Assembly in Vancouver many years ago. If the bread of the Eucharist is the bread of eternal life, and in breaking it we enter into communion with God and each other. It is only natural that we should fight against hunger and poverty, illness, and other manifestations of injustice in the world, he said. Every time we take communion, we are receiving that seed that invites us to die with Christ, so that the life of Christ may be reproduced in us. The words and prayers of the institution of the Eucharist transform bread and wine into a sacrament that feeds our faith. I like to think of words as seeds that germinate, blossom, and produce fruit because a seed is a living thing. We are constantly trained to think of words as rational tools to be used by rational people in a rational way. Often, however, words work at a much deeper level. I was driving home at night one day, and as I always do, I have the radio turned on, and I was listening to NPR on WBR. This show was about magic from street performers such as you may see on Harvard Square on a summer night to Sufi Muslims who believe to have access to supernatural powers through chants and sacred words. My imagination was especially aroused when they interviewed the rabbi who practices Kabbalah. He spoke with great passion of his conviction that there is great power in the words of, uh, of scripture you see, he said, God created the whole world by His Word. His Word is powerful. And the rabbi went on to cite Genesis 1, 1 in Hebrew. Bereshit para Elohim et hashamayim vehet haharetz. When I heard those words, in crawl, those words hit me like lightning. For a moment, I felt the same conviction of the rabbi. I was spellbound by his spelling and spilling of scripture. Some words are like that. They are just like wine. 
they take possession of the body without asking permission to reason, to clarity, to epistemology, to theology. They simply resound and then the body shifts. They impregnate the body with new life. Words that become body, like the Gospel says that the word became flesh and gave itself to us as body and body. So, I want to remind us all today that we too are seeds. Individually, each one of us is all the time reproducing in our actions and in our words those things that we allow to grow inside us. If we allow compassion and hope to grow, then it is compassion and hope that we reproduce. If we allow resentment and bitterness to grow, that is what we reproduce as well. As a church, we are collectively a seed of the kingdom of God, planted right here in the heart of all. May our words and our deeds be a good seed and produce much truth. Amen.